Attack pressing is the most offensive form of pressing, obviously. The team without the ball tries to apply pressure in the final third in order to force mistakes by the opponent with the ball and to win balls up front with these efforts. Winning the ball away from one's own goal can indeed be accomplished. In the process, the pressing team cannot help but allow the opponent to play a particular ball. That is the long ball which we cannot prevent from being played while pressing up high. There are certain situations in the game when attack pressing should be the option. That's our first keyword, situation. Being behind just before the end of the game, attack pressing is a logical choice, as mentioned before. But there are some coaches who like to do it right at the beginning of the game, or sometimes at the start of the second half, in order to surprise the opponent. The opponent thinks we will withdraw, protect the goal, and then for the first few minutes we do the opposite, which causes problems for the opponent, leading to their loss of the ball, which we can exploit by a quick transition with a shot on goal. These are the situations that we plan to create during specific times in the game. The next item is deciding where on the field should attack pressing, forechecking be played. The central area could definitely be our choice. Winning the ball in the central area brings about optimal possibilities to go for goal. From the center, it is much easier to advance the ball directly, as compared with winning the ball by the sideline, where space gets tight exactly because of the sideline restriction. A goal kick from our own keeper, taken from the ground, also offers the possibility for forechecking by closing down the space up front. There's always the chance of winning a second ball. Certain strategies are employed here, which I'd like to present. Also, certain situations involving throw-ins offer good for checking opportunities. 